Here are 10 thumbnails for Pixel Pops. Notice how the word pixel is spelled in two different ways as we're exploring this concept. The strongest thumbnails were refined and a final design was decided upon. Enter Adobe Capture. It's easy and great for digitizing hand-drawn logos. Once in Adobe Capture, you'll want to choose Shapes and then pull the slider to adjust the sensitivity. You want to go for the solid black as much as you can without having shadows in your work. Press the button to capture. Crop to the live area as close as you can get it. Click Smooth to compare with it on and off and see how it smooths and softens the jagged edges. It really does help. Now save and name your object so that you can find it in your Adobe libraries. Next, we'll work in Adobe Illustrator to clean up the digitized logo and then place the file into an InDesign document. Don't worry, I'm walking you through it. I am now in Adobe Illustrator. And the reason I'm in Illustrator is because I want to show you the proper way to work with a logo. Even though you may or may not have had any experience with Illustrator, I think you're going to be able to handle this just fine. So as you see, I'm in Illustrator and I have my Libraries tab open. If you saved the logo that you drew and captured, into your library, you should be able to find it in here. I have named mine Pixel Pops, but yours may be named Shape 1 or Shape 55 or something like that. So what you do to get a shape out of a library is you just drag it over or click and then you press and drag how large you want it to be. Kind of like when you place an image into InDesign you can tell it how what the size that you want. Now, the beautiful thing about Adobe Capture is that these are vector already. When you captured it, these are not pixels. It's a vector, very scalable logo. And that is the main reason why I am here in Illustrator and not in Photoshop. So when I click on this, you can see that a lot of things are selected, even things that are outside of what I drew. And that's okay. Um, all we are going to do, in, and I'm just using my um, selection tool to click on this, I'm going to go to Object Menu and ungroup it. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me individual letter forms, just as if you were in InDesign and you converted your text to outlines, you would have individual pieces. So we're dealing with the same types of things. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I want you to see what's happening here. Now, I tried my best to do a very good job with my Sharpie on paper so that I wouldn't have a lot of little white dots when I got to this point, and that's the key. If you were in Capture and you adjusted the slider to go to the darkest solid black you could get, but you still were getting issues, you may want to go back in and color that in darker. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot more cleanup. So, like I said, we've got a few things that are outside of what I drew, which you can see here, and there is an eraser tool in Illustrator. So I'm going to click on the eraser tool, and I'm just going to go over these little dots that I see outside of where I need them, and I am just scrolling up and down to see where I see those. Again, this is vector, it is not pixels, but erasers still work. Now, the second issue is that I have little white dots here. Now, I don't want to erase them. I'm gonna undo that because I'm just going to erase a hole in my letter and I certainly don't want that. So I'm gonna choose my direct selection tool which is a familiar tool to you in um, Illustrator. And when you roll over one of these little dots, you will it, will, it will pop up with a handle. And I'm gonna click one time and delete it. And I may still see a highlighted mark. I'm gonna delete again. So for every one of these little things, as soon as I roll over it, because I have the smart, um, smart tips and smart guides on, I'm gonna delete twice. So down here, one, two, 
click, delete, delete, click, delete, delete. Now I'm using my direct selection tool because if I used my selection tool, I'm going to select the whole letter and I don't want to delete the whole letter. Okay. So here I see another one, delete, 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 delete 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 and we're just going to go through every one because I want you to see how easy this is. I think I have them all. If I run into more I know what to do. Okay next where can we find color? Well under the windows we have a swatches panel just like in every other Adobe program you have used and I can click on individual letters and the thing you need to be aware of when you're working with Illustrator and you're preparing for things for print, which is what we're doing in this class primarily, you need to use CMYK swatches. Now these are the default swatches that popped up for me. Um, you can you know, do new color groups, you can open a swatch library, but we are not going to be using any um, spot colors. So just make sure that everything that you use from Illustrator is CMYK because you're going to bring it into InDesign and when we run pre-flight we don't want any issues because you'll have to go back just like you would have to go back to the original program if you had a photograph that was RGB. If you have a vector object from Illustrator you'll have to go back and change the colors. So all I'm going to do is just click on some colors for each one of these. I don't really have a super well thought out plan here. I just want to show you how easy it is. Now, all these little black dots, you're like, wow, that's going to take a long time to select. Well, it could, but now that I've colored everything else, here, all I have to do is click on one and I can go to the select menu and select the same fill color and that's going to select all of the black objects. Now I see there's another little one up here. So I'm going to deselect. Let me get my eraser tool. Kill that. And is that one or is that just something on my screen? I don't know. I'll do the same thing. Select same fill color. And I'm going to um, group these together so that I never have to worry about them again. And I may make them pink. It's a little loud. I'm going to make them this color. Yeah. So that is how easy it is to create digital art from your hand drawn logo types. And it is one way to digitize those things so that you will have a transparent background and you can work with these things. Now, we're not done yet. The thing that I would encourage you to do at this point from Illustrator, um, in InDesign you're working with document pages and in Illustrator you're working with artboards, just like Photoshop. So there is an artboard uh, tool here that looks kind of like a cropping tool. Again, I would pull this to the live area of the logo without touching anything and you just have to click on the selection tool for that to take. This is a little close so I am going to select everything and just use my little arrow keys and shift things left to make sure that nothing is across the edge. Okay now I'm ready to save. So I'm going to save this as an Illustrator file pops. It's an Illustrator file. Click save. And then I'm going to go into InDesign. But here in InDesign I am going to, um, I, I always forget where it is, I do command D for place. And I'm going to go to the pixel pops. I'm going to show my import options because there is a key thing here. I want to make sure that I have a transparent background. I'm going to click OK. And again, we've got this little uh, bounding box that's going to let us place it where we want to. And you're going to be like, what happened to my colors? Let's compare. It looks a little brighter over here, right? 
every one of the programs may shift your color just slightly. So just know that that's a possibility. It's not actually changing the colors, it's just changing the display of the colors. So here we have Pixel Pops here. If you wanted to, and I'll show you, it is transparent, it is scalable, and it's gonna look good at all sizes because it's a vector. If I wanted to add, let's say, an effect, maybe a drop shadow, First of all, never use the default drop shadow. It is way too intense and too dark. And if you haven't ever printed anything professionally before, I will tell you that anything that you can see on screen is going to print darker than you can imagine. So you can see that this dark shadow is already starting to um, create issues with readability. So my drop shadows are usually below 20. Uh, percent. I will put it at 20 just so you'll be able to see this so we can work with our distance. Um, if you go to none, um, you're not going to see anything. <laughs> you can also change your size. Um, if I take this too low, it's going to be very, um, I don't know, I, I don't like the look of it, um, but I definitely like some blur involved. Now, if you go changing, like I like to use global light so that everything in the document, if I ever add another drop shadow in the document, they all match. If you um, change it, that's going to change for everything that has a, a shadow in it if you use global. Yep. This is just up to you, but you can see that it's definitely helpful to have your logo not coming from Photoshop. Even if that's what you feel comfortable with, I've just walked you through the steps of getting your hand-drawn work captured through Adobe Capture into your library so that you can just pull it over into Illustrator, make adjustments, and then place it into InDesign where everything comes into the this nice cafeteria tray is what I like to refer to. InDesign as because you put everything into it and it's the container that holds all of the assets for the document. Just one comment about adding effects to logos. You might do that to bring a logo off its background to help create some contrast in an application like an ad or something like that. But if you're presenting a brand sheet or final logos to a client, you're not going to want to apply any effects to it because you want the client to see the logo in its final form. If you want some sort of three-dimensional effect or something um, as part of the logo every time it's used, then you'll build that into the logo design itself. It's okay if you don't know how to do that at this point. You can certainly refine these logos later if they make it to portfolio.